Raspberry Pi computer was invented with the intention of teaching basic computer science in schools. The inventors also saw a need to provide low-cost computing devices that could be connected to a TV and the internet to allow access to computing for a wider range of users. What we wanted to do as part of our project was to see if the Raspberry Pi and other low-cost devices such as uh, Android TV, Android tablets and, and even the iPad uh, could be used to access e-learning. And we also wanted to test out viable options for setting up a small computer lab in a community hall or a, or a training centre, so some sort of community-based training using a, something like a home router, uh, a 4G network or, or MBN, and then uh, combine that with the other devices and, uh, and see how that went. Uh, basically, the Raspberry Pi is a, a little, uh, very small computer. You can pick it up with your hands. Uh, it looks like this. You can see from here it has a HDMI out. Uh, it also has a nice little power cord. It has a uh, video out and it has a stereo connection as well. Uh, it also has a SD card. Now this SD card has the Raspbian uh, operating system on it which is an open source operating system and you put that in uh, once it's loaded and you can boot that up off there. In our testing what we found is that the, uh, the Raspberry Pi works great. We plugged it into a Dick Smith, uh, we had a couple of them, we plugged them into some Dick Smith TVs that we purchased for $150 each. Uh, the Raspberry Pi itself was $50 and then a couple of accessories to go with it brought the total cost of it to be less than $100. So we uh, tested that, it works well with accessing the internet, also accessing uh, spreadsheets, word processing, doing the normal stuff that a student would be expected to do. The, there were some challenges around the e-learning component, particularly getting Flash to work across a range of devices, as most e-learning is, is built in, and there were some real, real learnings out of that, and we found some ways to get around some of those issues. We partnered with Save the Children, the Brisbane region, who had developed an e-learning module, CHC40708, Plan and Coordinate Group Activities. They had a number of identified participants who work with communities on child safety programs and that these programs help build knowledge of providing safe environments for our children in our community. Interestingly, as a smaller community-focused training provider, Save the Children, with the help of Aspen Learning, actually once they developed their e-learning content, actually housed it in a Wikispaces site. So rather than using the standard corporate LMS, which many, many organisations don't have access to, they found some social media that was free and available. Uh, so we work with them on, on starting to implement this. Uh, there have been challenges along the way. The training's still being rolled out uh, in, a, in the Brisbane office and uh, apart from some of the technical challenges of getting the e-learning content to work, uh, we also had to work with the challenges of having uh, trainers who weren't used to using e-learning actually using that e-learning as part of their program. So there's been some planning with them and uh, Peter Nickel, who is a regional manager, has had to spend a fair bit of time on reviewing the content, uh, making sure, you know, adjusting that with the Aspen Learning Group and making sure that it was ready to be delivered. Uh, they've also got to work with an environment where they need to promote active discussion about real life examples and at the same time use the e-learning content uh, and the case studies within that to sort of have uh, consistent learning across that program. So we're still working on some of the technical issues and on the role of the training, but there've been some really good learnings so far and, uh, and we'll talk about those in a minute. Hi, my name is Graham. I work as an educational designer at the Bremer Institute of TAFE. We've been working through a lot of the low cost computing solutions that are out there. So what are some of the main hurdles for low cost computing. Well the hardware is certainly cheap enough and TVs are reasonably priced. So what is really the main issue? That would be flash. Flash is one of the main issues as well as processing power for multimedia presentations. If we want we can take the big step backwards and just stay in text based resources but that would be a large step backwards. 
You see, Flash has been the mainstay of the e-learning industry for quite some years. As more and more platforms evolve that either don't support Flash or have poor computational ability to deliver Flash-based products, other workarounds need to be found. Because Flash is not going to disappear overnight, but it will eventually disappear. Vimeo is a subscription-based website that we found that was very useful for translating um, video to various platforms, OSs and browsers. It does that by detecting the OS and the browser as you log into the website, and then it delivers the content in a format that your OS or your browser can deal with. But Flash Video is only one part of the equation because then we have the other interactive products such as uh, hotspot questions as questions and quizzes uh, and other things that we like to use where we involve a student actually doing something. To do this we need to find a better solution because just playing the video it loses its interactive ability. So the next thing we found was Storyline by Articulate. Now, whilst it didn't solve all of the problems, it does solve many of them. It has HTML5 and Flash output. It also outputs to its own app, which allows students to download the content and view it at their leisure offline. Quite a useful piece. But Storyline doesn't solve every problem that we can encounter. One of the encounters uh, that surprised us was that most of the products out there, especially in the cheaper bracket, don't actually translate video. All they do is wrap it up. There's still, at the core, a flash piece, and low-cost computing just chokes the moment you throw that sort of computational ability at its processor. Um, one of the formats that we did find works um, with medium success is 3GP, but there again there's not a lot of products that actually output to 3GP in the e-learning space at the moment. So multimedia really is the bottleneck with more and more mobile devices uh, hitting the market. A simpler solution for multimedia must be on the horizon somewhere. I just don't think it's here yet. <laughs>